Hello everyone, I am Tsuke Yan from Sun Yat-sen University. The title of our paper is Dual Way Gradient Specification for Basic Loss Distributed Deep Learning. My presentation will consist of these four parts. First, introduction. With the growing volume of training data and scale of deep neural networks, training a large DNA model at a single machine may take an uh, impractically long time. Distributed learning, especially data parallelizing, has become essential to reduce the training time of large DNN or on large data sets. Synchronous SGD is one of the most popular methods, but Synchronous SGD uh, based distributed learning may suffer from work lags, which deteriorates uh, efficiency and scalability. This is often called the straggler problem. It refers to slow works or slow links in the system. A straggler can randomly appear due to effects like resource sharing at the wrong time or uh, determines uh, uh, when a worker machine has lower computing capacity or a link has a limited bandwidth. Asynchronous SGD uh, removes a synchronization barrier among workers to solve this problem. Uh, which is usually realized on the parameter server architecture. Uh, in this architecture, works in exchange gradients and model parameters with the uh, server at their own pace. Uh, since there is no longer synchronization barrier among workers, uh, asynchronous SGD can significantly speed up the process of, uh, of distributed training. By increasing the number of workers, distributed learning like uh, async uh, SGD or synchronous SGD can uh, significantly reduce the total computation time. However, each of them introduce the compute uh, com communication overhead of exchanging model parameters and uh, gradients in each iteration. To reduce such communication cost, Various solutions and techniques have been proposed. Roughly, uh, community cost among workers can be reduced by uh, like reducing the frequency of communications or reducing the volume of data size or communi communications. Right. To reduce the frequency, we can apply methods like large batch training, which scales uh, data parallel SCD to more to more computing nodes without. Uh, uh, reducing the uh, workload on each node. On the other hand, gradient compression like gradient uh, quantization or gradient specification uh, is a powerful method that can largely reduce the uh, volume of exchange data. Gradient quantization like uh, one bit SGD, quantized SGD and the ten grade compresses the flow float point values with a prominent data representation and they use fewer bytes to represent each value. Uh, gradient specification uh, tries to exchange only essential gradient values. Uh, compared to uh, quantization, gradient specification can achieve much higher compression ratio in large-scale DNN training. However, Almost all existing uh, gradient specification approaches are designed based on synchronous SGD. Uh, they can only used for uh, synchronous training. In asynchronous training with uh, uh, asynchronous SGD, uh, since workers may be using different model per parameters at the same time, they need to download the whole model from the server. Uh, so uh, the specification is not, uh, not applicable. In this paper, we propose DGS, a novel approach for async training to overcome the communication bottleneck and offers significant optimization in a sparse scenario. Different from existing async training, where workers need to download the whole model from the server, we let workers download the model difference between global and local from the server. Accordingly, uh, DGS could specify both downward and upward communication to reduce the uh, communication volume. Uh, 
Uh, such a dual way comprehension approach can significantly reduce the commu communication cost in async training. Uh, more importantly, to avoid loss of, of accuracy, we design uh, we designed a fast aware momentum, a novel a novel momentum suitable for async training, uh, compared with existing momentum, which can only be used on the dance updates. Our momentum can achieve much better. Uh, convergence performance in the fast scenario. First, server side applies model difference tracking mechanism to downward communication, which allow us to faster specify the downward communication. In ASIC SGD to update local parameters, a worker will receive the global model from the server and replace the local model with the global model. However, DJS chooses to transmit model difference rather than the global model, and the model difference can be sparsely compressed. With the uh, uh, model difference check mechanism, we can compress the down, uh, downward communication. Uh, so next, we will look into the implementation of dual-way gradient specification operations, which has two parts uh, in the work side and the uh, server side. In the worker side, we can simply re regard the model difference as accumulated gradients. Firstly, the worker receives gradients and updates its local model. Secondly, the worker can fetch data and uh, compute gradients. Thirdly, it selects top uh, top R percent uh, gradients, and finally, the worker sends selected gradients to the server. In the server side, in order to track model difference of each worker, the server must obtain the accumulation of every update, uh, and uh, uh, and have to obtain what has been sent. So. Uh, so that the server can subtract the two values and uh, get the model difference, uh, capital G. After that, we can compre compress uh, model difference by sending only the top top percent of values of each layer. Uh, at the line five of the algorithm, there is a switch for a secondary compression. Um, uh, actually, uh, if you under the small scale settings, the server uh, doesn't need this because accumulation of several fast updates is highly fast too. However, uh, if you under circumstance like very limited network resource or very large number of workers, secondary compression can be uh, included to further reduce uh, downward communication. Secondary compression guarantees the compression, com, uh, compression uh, ratio of the model difference, uh, it, uh, and the compression ratio can be adjusted according to the bandwidth. Well, we discussed the algorithm and the implementation of dual-way specification, uh, and uh, which uh, eliminates the communication bottleneck of async training. Um, Next, we will introduce fast aware momentum, uh, uh, which is a novel momentum suitable for async training and uh, sparse scenario. Compared with existing momentum, uh, which can only be used under dense updates, our fast aware momentum can achieve much better convergence performance in the sparse scenario. As we know, uh, momentum is commonly used in deep learning, which is known to offer a significant optimization or boost for convergence. Mm, however, uh, uh, gradient specification will introduce indeterminate update intervals for each parameters. Uh, this could result in the disappearance of momentum factor. Here is uh, the equation of 
dense momentum updates. And here is the momentum equation of uh, sparse updates. Mm, so we could say gradient specification introduced some update intervals because workers won't send all gradients at every iteration. Uh, remaining gradients at workers uh, will not participate in the momentum update, which resulting the disappearance of momentum. Comparing the dense update, we found that momentum factor M disappears in the sparse updates. In the momentum SGD, actually we use M to control the proportion of the uh, his, uh, the, his, uh, the proportion of historical information. So the disappearance of M leads to an imbalance between new and old informations, and also uh, to a decrease in accuracy. Okay, let's look at moment, uh, sparse aware momentum. In sparse aware momentum, we accumulate uh, uh, the momentum locally at each worker. Instead of collect, uh, collecting it at the server, uh, we will uh, rescale remaining momentum in, in uh, EU. Uh, the idea behind is after each iteration, the remaining momentum values are more important than values that, uh, which just are sent. So it is reasonable to magnify the unsent gradients. From pyramid perspective, if we send gradients at time c and uh, time c plus capital T, a simple derivation reveals that momentum can be viewed as an accumulation of several batches. The underlying idea is surface aware momentum adaptively enlarges the base size for every single parameter. In other words, we turn the specification into the uh, ma uh, magnification of batch size. Mm. From the parameter perspective, dense training, uh, actually each parameter of the local mode has a consistent and uh, fixed update interval and batch size. However, specification techniques like a uh, drop part of gradients and uh, introduce uh, different update intervals to uh, each parameters. Because uh, workers only send part of gradients in each iteration. Uh, this change makes each parameters has have their has their own async update interval. Therefore uh, sparse aware momentum adjusts the batch size of each parameter according to its update interval. Previous study on gradient specification always keep tracking of the remaining gradients so as to uh, avoid uh, information loss. Actually, uh, different from previous works uh, with uh, sparse aware momentum, uh, the update does not need to accumulate uh, remaining gradients anymore. Such an advantage comes from the equivalence to enlarged batch size transformation, because increasing the batch size actually does not cause truncation, uh, truncation of gradients. Here is our uh, experiment setup. We compare DJS with two types of of algorithm. The first is dense algorithm like single node SGD and uh, async SGD. Uh, the second is uh, some sparse algorithm like uh, gradient dropping and uh, deep gradient compressions. In this CIFAR 10 result table, we can observe that the test accuracy decreases as the number of workers increases. This is because with more nodes, a, 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 a async SGD brings more staleness. Compared to 
other approaches, our approach achieves the best accuracy. And uh, accuracy only drops a little bit due to the uh, large number of workers. Imaginative results demonstrate the scalability of DJS on large data set. Results above show that DJS scales well and outperforms all other approaches when the number of workers increases. Next comes to the low bindwise experiment. In areas such as federated learning, IoT, providing high speed bandwidth and performing fully synchronized operations are very luxurious. Therefore, having the ability to train asynchronously in an inexpensive network is one of the conditions for distributed machine learning to land in these scenarios. In our experiments, we set the bandwidth to uh, 1 gigabit per second and uh, DGS achieves 4.7 times faster than, a, uh, than async SGD. Because the compression rate of DGS is in, in, uh, in, uh, independent of the number of nodes, the advantage of DGS will be more noticeable on the worst network resources and the more trained nodes. In more extreme scenarios, ASGD may be completely unable to train due to the communi communication bottlenecks, but the DGS can train normally. Here we present the training speed up with different network work bandwidth. In this evaluation, we didn't actually we didn't take the data idle time into account. As the number of workers increases, the acceleration of async SG decreases to nearly zero um, due to the uh, communication bottleneck. However, DGS achieves nearly a uh, linear speed up with 10 gigabytes per second. Oh, sorry, gigabits per second. Uh, with one gigabit per second network, async SGD has no speed up with six, 16 workers, while DGS achieves 12 times speed up, which proves that the superiority of DGS in the low bandwidth situation. In conclusion, actually, I think recent studies that they focus on solving uh, the bottleneck of gradient exchange. But uh, here has two issues. The first, uh, the downward communication of async training is a modal exchange, which is unsuitable for gradient specification and could cause a serious communication bottleneck. Second, uh, information loss in gradient specification leads to the degradation of convergence. Uh, our major contribution actually lies in these two points. We propose a model difference tracking mechanism to enable uh, specification for downward communication. And we uh, also design the uh, sparse aware momentum to bring significant uh, optimization boost for convergence. DGS actually enables large-scale ASIC training uh, with inexpensive uh, commodity uh, networking infrastructure. In future, the combination of DGS and the other compression approaches like uh, 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 Tengrid uh, randomly uh, coordinated dropping uh, um, can be considered. Uh, also, the sparse aware momentum is actually a general design for the uh, gradient specification. So uh, it can be used in synchronized training. We will look into that too. That's all of my presentation. Thanks for listening and look forward to your suggestions.